Okay, whistle rockets. Where do I start? There's a lot to get into. I'm going to walk you through what I know about the presses. Well, this is a hydraulic press, but your tooling, uh, your fuel, uh, other tools you can use and stuff you're going to need, and what not to use, something like this. Um, yeah, like I said, excuse the cats, but they're going to be in here because I have nowhere else to film. Uh, let's start with the press. Uh, any arbor press, hydraulic press, or pneumatic press will work. What I have here is a simple homemade hydraulic press that lifts up and you can crank down and this piston pushes it downwards. And I have a steel plate down here, don't mind that screw, it's stripped out, I have to cut it off or something. But, it's going to press that downwards, and that's that. Angle iron, some wood for support, simple. Uh, the tooling you're going to need, uh, let's, let's talk about tooling. This is my whistle tooling. You can buy whistle tooling, usually made out of brass or aluminum or something non-sparking. But you can make it yourself out of wooden dowels unless you're using a pneumatic press at very high pressures. Here's tooling not to use. Uh, this is a black powder rocket tooling kit that I made, or set. And it's, it has a very long coring piece, which is also made out of brass. And the reason for that is black powder rockets have to have a very long core. Then they have their delay. Whistle rockets, however, only have to have a very short core like this and then over that core I have this small piece of wood so I can have extra space for the resonance of the tube so it starts whistling right away uh, I'm gonna start with the longest tube and I have all my markers and it's set up for a three-quarter inch tube and then I'm gonna go to my shorter rammer and once I get so far I have to have a really short rammer because once it's getting filled with powder, I'm going to start running out of room, so I need a shorter rammer. Here's a tool that you're going to need when using a press like this. It's a 7 8 inch piece of PVC pipe that I put a split down it. And what that allows you to do is slide in a 3 quarter inch inner diameter cardboard tube and put these clamps around it and you can see I have them kind of in a spiral position to get even tension and you put your tube in there and tighten these all down that's what this is for and this tube it will not move it's, it's in there it's secure and the reason you do that is because when we press at high pressures without this that cardboard tube is going to split I mean there, there's almost no way around it it's gonna split it's happened to me so many times and I just broke down and had to make one of these. I mean, it's not very hard, it's really cheap. And, yeah, very handy. Now, another really important thing is your fuel. And you're obviously going to want to use whistle mix. This is the fastest composition I could come up with, but I have one error here. I don't know if you could already see it, maybe some experienced people can see that error. But normal whistle mix, you would say, is 70-30. Well, I found 72-28 to be a little bit faster, but I have 5% copper chloride. Uh, after some research and having this catalyst slow it down almost, it seems like, I realized 5% might be a little bit excessive. 1% to 2% and you're in a safe zone. That, that's going to be a lot better than 5%. But this fuel should still work. It's worked for every other application. So we're going to press with it. One last thing I want to mention about this, this tooling and doing it yourself, making it yourself, is you need to have lines as markers of when to stop. And this big thick black line right here means that it's all the way down. And once that's about three quarters of the way up from that position, I need to switch to a shorter rammer. Then I could bring this one up, which I don't have it marked. Um, once I have that one up so far that it won't fit in there, I need to switch to the smaller one. So really, you only need to switch on something like this. You only need to switch to fit it in your press. Unless you have a press that has a longer reach, 
then you want to be careful about using something like this or as long as this one while pressing from so far away because it's going to have more room to bend itself and ruin your whole rocket, break your jig, whatever, break your dowel rod. That's a lot of pressure you're putting it under. So just keep that in mind. One more thing I want to mention before we start pressing, and I promise I'll get to that soon, is increments. You're going to want to measure this in small increments and do it consistently throughout your whole rocket so you have a solid grain. Solid grain is going to lead you to more success with whistle rockets. Because if you don't have a good solid grain, you're not going to have a flying whistle rocket. I'm using a half teaspoon scoop and I'm going to put two scoops in each increment. So one teaspoon. And we can go ahead and get started. All right, take in our teaspoon. Dump an increment in. One more scoop. Yeah, a little funnel would be nice. I don't have one at the moment. Then, kind of get that off the edges. Take our first rammer. Place that in. Tighten it with hand pressure. And we're ready to press. Okay, so we're ready to press our first increment. What we're going to do is make sure that the hydraulic press is tight and sealed so it will pump up. There we go. I'm actually going to move this plate right here in front of it. Lift up our press. Place this in. Make sure it's straight and in the center. Then we're going to make sure that our piston here reaches the center part of the steel plate we have up there. And I have it marked and I can feel it. And we're on center. Okay, now all we're going to do here is hold down on this so it doesn't rise up and crank it until we've about uh, got about a ton on here so about 2,000 pounds you'll be able to feel about how hard this thing is working Okay, and we're going to relieve the pressure, push our piston up, and take this up. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to get this out of here. Um, it just really depends on how tight the dowel fits. I mean, it should be a good tight fit, but it just really depends on your tubing, your clamp, and everything. And see if you can see in there. That's already most of the core. Can I get it to focus? Well, that's as good as it's going to get. But you can see most of the core is covered. But we need to press one more time with this long rammer until that core coring piece is completely covered. Then we're going to switch to our next rammer. Okay, now we're going to tighten this back up. We have our second increment added in here and our rammer set down in it. Put this back in here. Gently lower it on there. Center everything out. And go ahead and press it again. OK. 
Okay. Let's see if I can reach around and find a center here. Right there. Hold the tube. Alright, now I'm going to have to hold it up here so I can crank a little bit harder. There should be a hard enough grain down in here that it won't try to come out of the bottom. Okay. Yeah, the wood creaks on this, but hasn't failed me yet. Should be okay. I, this all reinforces steel all the way around. Actually, it's steel reinforced with wood, but reliever pressure. I'll take it out. Now, I'm going to keep doing that until it's time to switch rammers. And then I'm going to keep doing that until it's time to switch to this rammer. Um, I'm going to let you skip the boring pressing, and I'll just come back when I'm down to this rammer. Okay. So I'm about at the extent of this, this rammer. Alright. Actually, I am at the extent. Extent. Watch this. See the problem? Now, because of that, Take this out, switch to my shorter rammer, make sure it's seated, make sure this is straight as best as we can. Crank this up. Make sure it's lined up on top when we get there. Right there. And press it. And we're going to press this to about half an inch from the top on this specific rocket. Let's go ahead and press it on camera for you. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Sometimes I'll let it sit for a second. And then after a few seconds, I'll try it again. It makes it a little bit easier because it kind of slowly compresses it. You don't want to pressure under pressure and then immediately back it off. You want to leave it there for a second anyways. So let's release this. Slide that up enough. All right, so we have our whistle rocket fully pressed. I left it about three quarter inches from the edge instead of half inch, like I said. But I mean, it's a that's a rock solid grain. Yeah, it's on my hands, but that was just loose stuff. So I just scratch it, and you can't even can't even see it. So now what we gotta do is just take it out of these clamps, and we have our rocket. I have extracted it from the sleeve that we made. You see there's the top grain, there's the bottom, Let's see if I get this far enough away to focus. There's our core, and a little bit of extra tube for resonance, so it'll start whistling right away. And that is a finished motor. No splitting of any kind. Rock solid. I'm filming this a little bit without the flash on, without any light, so you can see the core. You can see the rock solid grain looking very good. Um, I'm actually going to get this video up of this launching off tomorrow or the next day. So please stay tuned. It will be up and you will be able to see it. Alright, that about does it. I'm sitting here editing this video and if there's anything I miss, let me know. I'm sure there is. But either way... I hope you enjoyed the video and 
good luck with your whistle rockets because it's a new plateau in pyrotechnics.